sir good morning sir ha ah, good morning sir namaskar good morning. sir very good morning um, um professor rai saab a good morning to all of you dear colleagues and participants today out of uh, four sessions uh, um three resource persons are very senior uh, academics in our field first session second session and uh, last session they are very senior academics uh, sir namaskar sir uh, professor rai saab uh, good morning sir good morning very good morning should <laughs> i start yeah uh, after brief introduction and uh, Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah. Um, we are uh, we are thirty seven participants from different parts of the country, and uh, yeah. they belong to commerce management and economics disciplines. Yeah. Uh, this is our HRDC um, refresher course. Uh, I am Jyoti Kumar here. Uh, um, thank you, sir, for accepting uh, our invitation, and uh, we are privileged to have you. You are such a senior person, and uh, you are a well known person. Uh, Professor O.P. Rai is a well-known person in in the field of commerce and management across the country. He is not only um, uh, you know uh, a well-known academic; he is also a well-known administrator. Uh, he served uh, South University of Bihar as uh, Pro Vice Chancellor some time back. And thank you very much, sir, for giving us uh, time. And uh, now I request uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Bhartendu Singh, uh, uh, to give a brief introduction about the speaker. Ah, and good morning, sir, Professor Rai, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, he he has he has been my teacher, so uh, I am very happy to have another class for you, sir. Uh, so, sir, as uh, Professor Jyoti Kumar told you that uh, we are having thirty six registered participants in this course. Uh, few have not yet joined, but this day will be joining. Almost all are joining on every day, very regularly. Yeah. uh to the participants i would like to introduce uh, professor om prakash rai sir uh, although he needs no much introduction he is having more than 40 years of teaching experience serving banaras hindu university since very very long nearly 40 years he has served in bhu as a professor uh before uh, some time before he was pro vice chancellor of central university of south bihar in gaya Uh, uh, then uh, he had been head of the department of commerce, uh, Banaras Hindu University. He had been dean faculty of commerce, uh, Banaras Hindu University, and uh, right now he is uh, retired, but he is re-employed and he is still active, very much active in uh, academics, in teaching. I remember during my days when I was studying my D B Com days, 1992 to 95. Uh, he was one of the most regular in our classes. Uh, hardly two minutes he used to take to enter into the class, and uh, in most of the days he used to go after the class after finishing the class. Means after the time was over, when next teacher is standing outside, then only he used to leave the class. So he enjoyed teaching since then, and still uh, that passion I could see uh, when uh, two weeks back when I contacted him to be a resource person for this course, uh, he happily agreed. and uh, he gave me a full free hand that you keep my name at any slot i am not giving you any time any day you decide date you decide time and you decide the topic also so he gave me full hand and then also he gave me a uh, assurance that if at uh, some instance if some teacher some faculty is not turning up uh, you may call me at any time so just give me half an hour preparation and i will be there for you so that passion uh, what i see in 1992 i can see it now also or rather i feel it might have increased with the time sir so thanks for accepting our uh, 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 our request to be a resource person here sir you are very resourceful i know and um, his expertise is uh, hrd banking and insurance so sir time is now yours sir you can take uh, i have already taken 2 minutes from your side 
so you can start now sir thanks sir. Uh, many thanks uh, to professor atendu singh ji uh honorable dr nbr jyoti kumar uh, senior professor and uh, head of the department of commerce vijayapuram university and uh, dear participants from different parts of the country uh to begin with i i would like to offer my heartfelt uh, thanks uh, for giving me an opportunity to interact with the uh, young teachers uh dear participants i am not here to give you lecture you all are already lecturers that is what nowadays we call assistant professors so i congratulate each one of you for deciding to devote your whole life for a noble profession like teaching whatever i am going to say here is not for the sake of uh, uh enriching your knowledge or skills it is simply sort some sort of uh, interaction between you and me uh so take all this uh, discussion in that way and any time if you want to ask anything you can simply uh, request for this question and i will be happy to share my replies i start with this particular question that uh, ask yourself i mean i'm saying i'm talking about the participants ask yourself why you decided to become a teacher many other avenues are there you might have gone for some from becoming ias ips pcs or anything of administrative uh, type of jobs you might have thought of joining some bank or you might have gone for some other private sector jobs but then you decided that you will take up this challenging assignment of teaching uh, until and unless you are sure that why you have joined uh, uh, this particular uh, a uh, uh, profession perhaps you would not be in a position to make justice with it i personally feel that uh, teaching basically is meant to prepare young executives young professionals young officers young employees or even young citizens who are going to serve in different ways in different parts of the uh, society so if this is the objective that you will put your best for making good citizens good employees good officers then you have also when you go through the classes you must also in the, in the beginning itself ask your young students that why they have joined that particular program because as you must be very clear why you are teaching similarly the students must also be very clear why they are studying many times many young students they say sir it is very simple we have joined because we need some degree uh, and without degree as you know uh, no jobs can be uh, offered so obviously we have joined because we want uh, uh, some good job and through that we may enjoy the life okay the reply might not be the reply might not be said that is wrong but the direction is wrong obviously if you, if a teacher if a student is uh, uh, studying uh, for getting a degree or if teacher is teaching for completing the course or if a uh, like if a lecturer is giving lecture in Uh, academic staff college for completing the formality of giving a lecture obviously somewhere it is it is feared that the quality may suffer so the purpose will not be simply to complete the formality but the purpose would be that to make difference i i i believe that once you give a lecture in the class or if you deliver a lecture in some refresher course or if you go anywhere for giving a lecture after completing the lecture dear friends after completing the lecture there must be some say 0.00001% difference 
uh, in the knowledge and skills of the participants. If, if it is not like that, maybe the quality of the teaching was not proper, or maybe the, 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 the listeners, they were not sincere, serious, devoted, and dedicated uh, to the listening part. But either way, the, the purpose uh, does not serve for what it is organized. So when you start teaching in the class, do something. First of all, make them know that you are, you are studying because you, want, you have to improve your knowledge and skills. Until and unless the students understand this particular objective of attending classes, uh, things may be not in the right direction. So every student sitting in the class must note this point, must understand quite clearly that the purpose of attending the class is to improve our own knowledge and skills by any small degree, but there must be uh, that purpose. And once you have this purpose, then the rest comes automatically. automatically. When you teach for the purpose of increasing the knowledge and the skills of the participants, uh, even by, as I said, even 0.0001%, then obviously you would like to do something. You would like to give something which is not available elsewhere. You might, have, you might say something. You might share something which is earlier was not known to the students. So uh, we understand uh, we have problems with our educational system. Uh, as you all know, it is basically uh, the, 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 the birth, uh, the, 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 the master of the, all this educational system is what we call Lord Macaulay, uh, who uh, in 1835 uh, brought this educational system after ruthlessly killing our own diamond Indian educational system. He, he, he is on record to, to say that until and unless the quality of teaching in Indian uh, schools, colleges, universities is uh, destroyed or disturbed, we cannot rule the country uh, for a longer duration. So that statement itself certifies that our educational system was really uh, a diamond piece. There, the students used to, to remain with their teachers, uh, say up to 25 years of age. They were not worrying of anything, but simply uh, concerned with uh, adding their knowledge and skills. Uh, nowadays, you see what, what is happening. I, I, I many times say that if you make a product and never try to find out uh, uh, the feedback with regard to the quality of product, uh, then obviously uh, the, the, life of the, the life of the product will not be uh, for a longer duration. So if we teach and if we prepare students and never ever care that ultimately after teaching where the student went, what happened with them? Should we not try to find out from the employers whether where the students are working, whether, whether they are satisfied say for, the, for example, with the behavior of the students, with the quality of knowledge, with the quality of the skills, which they are having, which they are uh, using while doing the job. I, I, I do not think that many of us do this exercise. So as I say, that until then, unless you get feedback about the quality of the product, how you're going to improve. So, uh, Somewhere it is lacking, and uh, we used to try to. I when I go up to some universities, I I request by uh, HODs, uh, sir, please kindly do something. Uh, for example, prepare a register, note down the pass outs, uh, their their names, their 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 mobile numbers, their email address, and uh, from time to time, say once in a year if possible, try to call them and ask where you are, what you are doing, are you feel that you should have done something good for you. So maybe that some of the students tell us something, and by that we may, we may come to know that where we are lack, where we are, where our teaching is suffering, and if this is not done by the organization, even our young teachers they themselves can prepare the list, and from time to time, ask your their their, their ex students that what, what they feel, what was the quality of teaching which I I miss the teacher give to them. Maybe that uh, when they were studying, they, they were not in a position to, to, to give their, their fair, uh, fair uh, feedback. 
But once they have passed out, now uh, they, they are no longer worried about their marks. So they may give, give us something that, well, sir, if you could have, if, if you could have done this, might be the teaching uh, could have been better. So uh, this, this continuous exercise, if we do, uh, then I feel that the quality of teaching may uh, improve slowly and slowly. Before I take up the topic, I will also say uh, that where, what should be the, 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 the concentration of a teacher? I, as a teacher who has offered around uh, uh, 43 plus years of uh, uh, teaching uh, to the young st students, I feel uh, that, uh, that the basic uh, focus is to on understanding. Uh, that means if we teach something, which we should teach in such a way that the concepts are clear to the students. In fact, I say that when you start lecture on the first day and you take up a topic for teaching, you tell your students that why that, that particular topic is being taught. What is the purpose? When that the chapter will be completed, well, what addition will be made in the knowledge and the skills of the students and where that knowledge will be applied in future when they go for jobs or when they go for their own life. Believe me, once you, uh, for example, since I am from HRM, suppose I am teaching stress management. So one objective might be, one way of teaching must be that maybe that I, I come and start teaching what is stress, uh, why stress is caused, uh, what should be done to, to manage the stress? This can be done. Points might be noted down by the students, but still they may not have any idea as to how stress can be managed. So before we start teaching stress management, we should tell the students that, well, see, today a very important topic is going to be discussed, which is going to be with you uh, throughout your life. Stress is something uh, which loves everybody, but nobody loves it. So do something and then you tell that well today uh, we will give you something by which you will be better positioned to stress management in your life so if this environment is created then the student will uh, start understanding you with this perspective that look the teacher is teaching something which is going to help me in my future life so the, similarly all topics which we teach they, they have some relevance if they have no relevance, then why we are teaching? So this understanding uh, must be done in this way. And uh, when we teach also, uh, there must be some innovative thinking. Uh, dear teachers, uh, now, in the coming years, only those uh, universities and uh, only those uh, schools and colleges will survive who will emphasize on innovative approaches. The project day students, uh, they are technology friendly and uh, believe me, whatever we teach, they know more than what we are teaching. So completing the course by giving some points uh, perhaps is not going to help. Uh, say for five years uh, or so say maximum of 10 years, you may survive in this way, but ultimately, uh, the things are going to change, as I perceive, the things are going to change. I have already seen these changes in different uh, private universities of recruit, uh, and they have, they have totally changed their way of teaching. So should we also think of that? So how can we teach in, a, in any innovative way? Again, it regards our thinking. No master reply can do there, but then uh, you have to think that how you can make your, 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 your mental food tasty, delicious. You see, like physical food, even the mental food is delicious. Can be made delicious. How can you make that? My lecture, for example, I'm giving a lecture. It might be good, it might be bad. If it is a good lecture, well, I have been satisfied. Even if it is a bad lecture, never mind. I repeat, even if it is a boring lecture, worthless lecture, even then it is going to serve a purpose. And what is that purpose? That purpose is that you will learn how a boring lecture gives pain. In other, in other words, when you go in the classes and teach and your lecture sometimes is boring, then what pain you are giving, what pain you might be giving uh, to the students that you can experience today. 
in that way uh, it will help you not to give a boring lecture uh, in your classes so this uh, innovative thinking research orientation also uh, is a uh, dimension where we have to do work as a teacher we have to do not only uh, ourselves but for the uh, for the students also uh, uh, let me share one simple example uh, one fine day i was teaching a theories of motivation uh, in bcom part 1 i told uh, my students that well uh, theories of motivation are nothing these are some some innovative ideas given by some persons in their own times and when they gave that particular idea or that new thinking that was uh, accepted widely by the rank and file the, that that idea that approach that thinking was widely ac accepted as useful in dealing uh, different issues in the organization or outside the organization and because of that uh, these theories came up, come up slowly uh, in different years having said that i now said to my young students that well dear students can anybody from you bring a new theory of innovation motivation look at my statement i i asked my young students that can anybody think of bringing a new theory of motivation obviously my some of my young friends sitting in this uh, a particular program might start smiling that what we uh, are speaking about is asking to to be compassed their students that can they bring some new theory of motivation <laughs> when you smile on me i also smile on you who are thinking in that way well you see our students are full of energy full of capabilities but but until and unless like hanuman ji not uh, encourage them to do something and you do not make them understand that it is the students who can bring some theories nothing can be done so i said i give you one month time and after one month time if somebody is in a position to bring some some new approach come with me come with that approach in my chamber and believe me uh, after one month only one student came and he brought some few pages some pages Uh, wherein he has written something about uh, how we can motivate uh, others so my point is forget about what was that uh, uh, new approach which he thought is a new approach but the point is that if you teach in this way uh, some day may happen uh, that new ideas start coming up then students will think that well they are capable right now they think no no how can we until and unless we become some uh, professor how can we bring a new theory i personally don't believe in this It is young chaps who can do something. We are closed mind in that. I'm sorry to say, that is I can say about me. These young chaps, they have open mind. They can think in any way. So with this, if you uh, teach in this way, uh, maybe some new ideas come, some new theories come, and that is how uh, our work can be uh, accepted. Uh, so uh, right now, you see, and another last point I will talk about this is your your startups. startups are coming how can what we can do as teachers in startups is there a new role of teacher in startups i personally feel uh, we teachers can play a very important role in the recent uh, one or two years i i have been emphasizing in my class uh, to my young friend that you think uh, you think of some startup incubation centers have been established in different uh, institutions almost all important institutions including colleges they have startup they have started their own incubation centers where new ideas are taken and then those ideas if possible they may be uh, converted to some uh, some new uh, project so these are this is what i was uh, this, this uh, some of these points which I, i i thought before i start my lecture i should share with my young uh, friends now believe me once again i repeat underline i am not coming here to give you some uh, some super knowledge to all our teachers and uh, i have also attended orientation programs and 
such that I got the prompts when I was a teacher. And uh, I know the pain which is there uh, for a teacher who is meant for speaking, is, is forbidden, is not allowed to speak, but simply sit and listen carefully for one and a half hours of, or for four hours or five, five hours as per the uh, schedule of the uh, academic staff always. So uh, I, I, I understand that uh, uh, this punishment of sitting uh, silently for hours together for persons who are meant for speaking, really it is very challenging assignment. And I hope my friends will uh, bear the pains with pleasure and uh, try to know something, try to, to add their knowledge uh, uh, through these lectures. So <clears throat> let us start our topic. Uh, the topic for the today lecture is uh, the science and the art of human behavior. Now, when we talk about the science and art of human behavior, then we have to first of all uh, understand what or what do we mean by human behavior. Well, friends, what do we do is human behavior. Human behavior is what a person does. Whatever is being done, that is human behavior. Human behavior is the way a person acts or reacts in a given situation. Or if you want to have, a, uh, have some ornamental uh, meaning, then a, a full sentence may be framed by saying that human behavior is a process. Human behavior is a process of receiving, understanding, and accordingly responding to a particular event in a particular way in a particular situation, at a particular time, by a particular person. Now, this is an ornamental meaning. Uh, a, a lengthy sentence might not be understood by all properly, but that is how we have to teach. We have to teach to our students a simple meaning, which can be understood by anybody and everybody. For example, what is human behavior? What a person does with human behavior? A very simple thing. What a person does is human behavior. The way a person acts or reacts in a given situation is human behavior. You teach, and then you ask your to your young students, would you understand what I said? Have you got the idea? So when you ask counter questions in the class, uh, the students will become more attentive, and uh, maybe that they, they, they learn more. As we all know, many times uh, some students are there in the class, they are physically present, but mentally absent. So, so to minimize uh, uh, such type of situations where the students are present in the class, but mentally absent, we may ask some counter questions. And those, those counter questions will make sure that all the students are careful, they are, they are serious and sincere to the job. So human behavior is a process of receiving, understanding, and accordingly responding to a particular event in a particular way in a particular situation, at a particular time, by a particular person. You know, nature does not believe in carbon copy. As we all know, DNA of two persons are never the same. The thumb impressions of every individual is unique. So, no two human beings are the same. Even a human brain does not always behave on the same line. For example, a student asks a question to you and you reply, and you reply ha happily. Next day you come in the class, the same student asks a question to you and you become angry. And the student starts wondering what happened yesterday Sir was very polite, sir was very cooperative, and he replied the question, the, the questions very, uh, very scientifically. But what happened today? Why he's not replying? And why he became angry? The poor chap never knew that uh, today uh, or on that day, um, sir or madam, the wife or the husband 
had a quarrel at home and after quarreling quarreling he or she came in the class directly and then that was the bad mood which created this that anger so uh, a human brain does not always behave on the same line a small a small mistake made by you in the class may may change the whole personality of a student that is the that is the the the, the unique feature of human behavior uh, once again for example you you scold somebody you scold somebody badly and uh, that scolding might uh, result in uh, that student not asking questions further throughout his uh, uh, student life i think i'm you are getting my point you scold somebody badly and you never uh, thought that this would be the impact you scold you scolded him in the class badly before the students and that uh, scolding gave a message to the student that i am poor i am not well mannered i am not qualified and then because of that perception he decided not to ask questions in future in the class see see the result what happened by uttering a few uh, sentences so you your 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 behavior make uh, may make uh, uh, the life hell or may convert the life of hell to the life of heaven so uh, that is the unique uh, point of uh, human behavior if we uh, talk about uh, the significance the why human behavior should be studied and why i should give a lecture on human behavior and why you should understand human behavior uh, some aspects of human behavior my replies will be that if you study human behavior properly if you observe behaviors of others including you you are also then a number of benefits you can derive look at my way of teaching how i am teaching look at your own way of teaching how you teach then you can compare both the teachings maybe that you i or you get some idea as to how we can improve ourselves or or where we stand where i stand as a teacher when i teach so understanding human behavior provides you an opportunity for self evaluation you can evaluate your behavior whether it is right or wrong and once you ident if uh, if you find that you there there are certain problems with the, with your behavior then it gives this study or this observation uh, gives you uh, a chance an opportunity to improve your behavior so understanding behavior many times or at least sometimes may help you to improve to improve your own behavior and once you improve your own behavior then it may help in bringing a stronger interpersonal relationships a stronger interpersonal relationship with the with the superiors with the peers and with the subordinates so if you study human behavior the, the gist is that if you study human behavior properly it will ultimately help you in making your behavior more pleasant so with this uh, background on the importance of human behavior i i feel that by now you have come to know that uh, by today's lecture it may help you to make you a better human being a better teacher who is behaving in a way which others may aspire to behave like that i think i am able to make you understand i am saying 
your behavior should be ideal your behavior should be ideal ideal to the extent dear uh, teachers that anybody who is coming before you he is impressed he or she is impressed he or she is willing to follow you the way you want to to to, to follow so that is the power of human behavior a number of examples are there where because of better human behavior uh, the things could be, could be handled very easily which were very difficult to be handled i i have been the chief proctor of banaras in the city where we have to handle around uh, 35000 plus students at a time we have around 1000 security guards with us and uh, another thing sir yeah so uh, not many like to become chief proctor of uh, this university why because they say why we should go for for, for painful days why you should uh, accept a, a job uh, which is not meant for teachers many say that uh, maintaining law and order is not our job we are teachers we are meant for teaching and why you should ruthlessly kill our time for administrating the students so i will not make a logic with this uh, approach it is okay teachers are not meant for maintaining law and order but the point is who else will do that will police do that military persons will do, do that are military persons can can they uh, uh, control these students obviously perhaps not so for that purpose you have to understand the behavior of the students why they are behaving the way they are behaving if they are arrogant if they are putting dharnas if they are chanting jindabad murdabad nana shahi nahi chalegi find something like that well uh, we have to try to understand why this is happening why all why they are doing all these things and once you understand the root cause of that behavior then then once you understand the problem now the solutions are always there so the only thing uh, the capacity which is required for handling uh, difficult situations is to develop the cap- the ability to to, to understand uh, the various behaviors involved with that event uh, scientifically so how can you do that now i take up some some aspects of some i take up some uh, such aspects which may help you to understand and improve yours as well as others behavior so i can say some tips for improving human behavior um it can go for a, for, for the whole day i will request uh, uh, professor bhartendu singh ji to to intervene whenever you find the time is over please in, uh, let, let, let me know i will stop there itself uh, i would also like to say uh, why i say like this because you see uh, dear the teachers when you when you teach many times you cross the bound the time boundaries as bhartendu ji was saying that when i used to take the classes uh, i i i never got an idea that when the, the time is over so some 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 teacher is standing outside and when uh, he or she knocks the door is our time is over now okay okay thank you thank you i'm coming out because you 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 go outside the time horizon so similarly when i uh, here i am giving lectures might be that i fail uh, to to keep the schedule please help me to uh, to follow your time uh, frame okay friends so some tips for improving human behavior now for uh, improving you know human behavior you should know about the ego states ego e g o ego ego states now what is ego my teachers from commerce and management might be knowing about that uh, but well maybe that the, the, the teachers from economics might not have got opportunity to understand these things or might have they have studied themselves i do not challenge that they are not they might not know even then they are knowing i am just simply trying to re- to uh, refresh their mem- memories you see ego state when you talk about ego states we have to understand the meaning of ego what is ego ego with reference to organizing behavior is 
a person's way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. Ego is a person's way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. How you think, how you feel, and how you behave. So keeping these three aspects, that is how, how you think, how you feel, and how you behave, uh, the ego states of human beings might be classified in three categories. How, how thinking, feeling, and behaving is done. If we observe uh, uh, the thinking, feeling, and behaving of different persons, you will find that three types of human beings will be there. One is known as the persons who are having parent ego. So parent ego state holders. Parent ego state holders. That means uh, such type of persons, they are having the ego which we can say parent ego state or parent ego. Now this parent ego, I will not go in much of detail. Uh, simple meaning will serve the purpose. A person who is, is in parent ego state, he or she will have a dominating behavior. In a very simple way we can say, dominating behavior. Parent ego state means the person is having an ego state where he or she will always like to dominate. Now look at around yourself. Go to your uh, colleges or universities from where you come. Observe the persons with whom you interact regularly. And then you will find that there are certain uh, persons who have parent ego state. That is, they always try to dominate. You might have uh, uh, your superior who is in parent ego state. You go to him and say, uh, sir, I want uh, a, a, a leave, a casual leave, uh, or I want some special casual leave, or I want medical leave, whatever you call. He will, he will start shouting. What the hell you are talking about? How can you take a leave? Exams are near, or examination is going on. Something like that. Or you miss a class, and uh, the, the superior uh, starts taking around, uh, of the college or of the city department, and uh, unfortunately, you, you are found absent because of any reason. The parent ego superior will later on call you and may uh, give, may ask in writing that why you are absent. Or he or she may also report that matter to the higher authorities, say to the vice chancellor, that he or she was found absent. So such person or such behavior is what we call parent ego. When, uh, for example, another example, if I am here and if I perceive that all the young teachers who are sitting here, they, they do not know anything. I'm, I'm super senior professor. I have all the knowledge with me. None, any, none uh, sitting here has the knowledge, the level of knowledge which I am having. Well, <laughs> this type of approach is generally uh, taken by those who are having parent ego. Second one is adult ego. The persons who are in adult ego, uh, their uh, uh, feature is that they neither want to dominate, they, are, they neither want to dominate nor get dominated. They are rational persons. They are having logical behavior, behavior based on logic. So neither they do not want to dominate anybody, and at the same time, they also do not like that others dominate him or her. So there is adult uh, ego state, and third and last one is the child ego state. Child ego state again is ego state where spontaneous behavior is noticed, spontaneous. Persons under child ego state, they act first 
they react first and then they start thinking what was their reaction what they said what they did so they may become angry at one time and just within a second they will start uh, asking for for uh, forgiveness so they behave like a child who may say anything who may do anything at any moment without thinking of the consequences remember uh, these uh, ego states have nothing to do with age even a child of 5 years might be in parent ego state and even a person of 60 years might be in child ego state so uh, ego state is not directly uh, attached or related with the uh, age age may play some role in formulating but then it is not directly uh, related now uh, dear participants uh, you are not you are not required to reply simply think of yourself think of yourself under which ego state you behave and remember uh, these ego states may differ from and time to time in the uh, on the same day maybe in the morning when you are in your, your home you are in a parent ego state dominating your wife your husband or your children and when you go to the college uh, or in the city department uh, you behave in a parent in a adult ego state and maybe in the in the evening you may have some child ego state by doing something which is not logical so a person may 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 pass through all these three states uh, say parent adult and child on the same day but then if you want to know about your your ego state the only simple formula is that think of that generally say 60% of your time in which ego state you act or you may ask what you like do you do do you feel that uh, you must dominate everybody or do you feel that i should not dominate anybody and should not be dominated by any, uh, by anybody or you do not understand in which ego state you are and you behave in, in any way without having any uh, idea of consequences ask a question yourself to yourself now i think by now you have made up your mind that under which ego state you are now my observation with what you might have thought of if you say that you are in parent ego state uh, dear teacher i will advise you to kindly try to change yourself because the persons in parent ego state generally not all is generally have more problems generally they have more problems as compared to solutions they they have in their store more pains than pleasures and also unfortunately the possibilities of having uh, different elements uh, elements like uh, like they may suffer from blood pressure they might have uh, uh, more stress uh, they might have they might become diabetic they might have some problem with their uh, kidney or with liver or something like that but then i am not saying that somebody who is diabetic or who has some liver liver problem Uh, he or she is having parent ego state, not like that. Never, never. I'm not saying like that. What I'm saying is that the possibility of suffering, uh, having uh, different defects, different uh, problems, not only with your body, but with surround, but but with surroundings also. So when you when you understand that uh, by having a uh, 
adult ego state by having this apparent ego state you are going to have more pains more problems more complications more difficulties then why you should go for in that ego state think of that and if possible try to change yourself uh, slowly and slowly room was not built in a day so obviously you cannot change yourself uh, overnight but if you try my 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 purpose of this lecture is to make you understand that uh, uh, after getting lessons from your elder brother like me uh, who was earlier used to be in parent ego state but later on uh, when i got the uh, lesson that this the uh, ego state uh, this parent ego state is going to have more complications i slowly and slowly changed so parent ego state if you are having adult ego state well congratulations congratulations once again this is the ego state which is desired and uh, if you are still uh, if you are at the age of 30 40 50 years and still you say that you are having child ego state uh, i think some homework has to be done and you have to try to go shift switch over from uh, child to adult having said that i will also say that sometimes it is required to get dominant to, to give uh, to, 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 to dominate others sometimes it happens it, it is the demand of the situation so barring those exceptions where uh, their the demand is to dominate uh, you you should uh, in general conditions in normal situations uh, you must have this adult uh, ego state now i take you to some more depth now think of the behavior how how people are will be behaving suppose you are a teacher you are having parent ego state and your students also who are sitting before you they are also having parent ego state and at least some of them are having parent ego state so a teacher in parent ego state and a student of uh, having a parent ego state if they interact if they interact what will be the result not difficult to be imagined let me change the situation some in this way that suppose you are in your chamber sitting in the chamber you know in your room in the university department and some student of yours who is in parent ego state may enter your room and start interacting with you so you are in parent ego state the student is also in parent ego state the things might be very difficult to handle anything can happen now if you are in parent ego state and if your student is in adult ego state still the things are not very very much comfortable but at least some but at least better than the first thing am i audible yes sir yes sir am i audible yes sir yes sir audible there are some calls Continue. so if you are in in parent ego state and your student is in adult adult ego state still the things are not very rosy and finally if you are in parent ego state and the student is child ego state well once again uh, things might be difficult the student might might start making arguments but the soothing soothing factor is that since he or she is in child ego state uh, so if you start scolding him maybe that he um, that is go down he or she go down goes down so bad and teacher in parent ego state and the student in in parent ego state or in adult ego state or in child ego state well think of the consequences if you convert this uh, example to some uh, other way that suppose you are in parent ego state and your hod is also in parent ego state if you are in the adult ego state and your hod is in adult ego state and if you are in parent if your parent ego state and your hod is child ego state think of the consequences 
in all nine situations are there. The, the three are of parent ego state. Similarly, the other three are of adult ego state. That is, if you are in, if if you as a teacher are in adult adult uh, uh, ego state and your student in is in parent ego state, well, the student may may try to dominate you. So think of that situation. You might might be finding sometimes it is why it is happening. Why the teacher? Why the student is trying to dominate? Because he or she belongs to adult ego, uh, uh, parent ego state. So, so what has to be done? Once you have come to know that this problem, then you call that student, sit with him or her, and make him or her know that well, if you continue in this parent ego state, things will be difficult for you in future. So that is how. That is why and how this this understanding is very important. As a teacher, you have to also perform this duty of uh, changing uh, the ego states of your students. Sometimes, even you try for the superiors or for the peers or for the subordinates, depending upon depending upon your abilities. Now you can say, "Ki sir, is it possible to try to change the 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 ego state of your HOD? Is, is it possible?" Well, I I believe it is possible. The thing is impossible in this world. The only thing is. You must have the capability. How you can do this? If you know how to make others know what you know, things are okay. <laughs> Dear uh, teachers, uh, many times it happens that uh, even some of us know something, but the problem is we do not know how to make others know what we know. In fact, you should also tell your, your students. That dear students, first of all, acquire knowledge. First of all, acquire knowledge, and then develop your skills. Without acquiring knowledge, you can do nothing. Knowledge is raw material. So, if you have knowledge, you can make a finished product. If you have raw material, you can make a finished product. But if you do not have raw materials, how can you make? A product, but again the point is that even if you are having raw materials, and you do not know how that raw material has has to be processed for making a finished product, you cannot make it. So for converting raw material, raw materials to finished product, you need skill. So you have to make your student know that we are the students. First of all, you acquire knowledge, and then you develop skill. you have to tell the students that look dear students you are you are not going to be evaluated on the basis of what you know when you go for interview when you go for viva you will not be never ever you will be evaluated on the basis of what you know instead you will be evaluated on the basis of what you make others know what you know so for making others know what you know obviously the skill is required so in this way uh, as a teacher you can uh, first of all understand these things and then you can use this uh, this uh, ego state uh, for de developing yourself and for others also so before i take other point let me complete the the, the rest part i was saying that parent 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 adult parent child then adult ego state you are having in adult ego state your student is in parent ego state or you may be in adult uh, ego state and your student also may be in adult ego state this is one of the good good situations teacher in adult ego state and student also in adult ego state both are not trying to dominate each other and they are not trying to get dominated by each other ideal situation and finally when you are in the adult ego, adult ego state and your student is in child ego state think of this consequences and lastly sometimes it may happen that uh, uh, any of my young teacher might be in child ego state getting phd degree is no guarantee that you are not be in a child ego state so spontaneous behavior is there there from the side of the teacher so child ego state teacher in the child ego state 
and is studied in the parenting stage. Think of the situation. Similarly, the, the teacher in child ego state and the student in adult ego state. And lastly, when both teacher as well as taught, both are in child ego state. Both are in child ego state. Think of this situation, what may happen. So uh, this particular aspect of ego states gives us uh, a fairly good idea that for keeping ideal behavior, for maintaining ideal behavior, we must know the ego states of different persons as well as our, uh, of, our, of our own also. So from today's lecture, I at least take this point uh, in your mind and you apply these things if you're not applying. Uh, said that uh, whenever somebody we start interacting with somebody, remember OP Rai, that well, Rai sir said that uh, before we interact, let us think of that under which ego state the person is going to behave or is in, in which ego state the person is by the way of his talking, laughing, acting, you can get some idea uh, as to which ego state the, the person sitting or standing before you is in. So, first of all, get some idea about the person with whom we are going to interact or with whom you are interacting and accordingly behave. Extra precautions must be taken in those cases, in those situations where uh, the person with whom you are interacting is in parent ego state. Because such person will always try to dominate and which will ultimately uh, give you more pains than pleasures. So the ego state. Second uh, aspect of human behavior, which I would like to talk is uh, 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 this life positions. Know about the life positions. Now, what are life positions? Life positions are perception of oneself in relation to others. Life position or life positions, whatever you call it. Life position, you can take. Life position is perception of oneself in relation to others. How you perceive yourself as compared to others. So four approaches uh, uh, are there. One is, I am okay, you are not okay. Second is, I am not okay, you are okay. Third one is, I am okay, you are okay. And fourth one is, I am not okay, and you are not okay. So the one is, I am okay, you are not okay. It is. Uh, the life position which leads to which leads to parent ego state, isn't it? I am okay. What I am saying is okay. You are wrong. Sometimes you find some some superiors who always say I am okay. You are wrong. So this is the uh, parent ego state where you find such statements. I am okay. You are not okay. Second one, me. I am not okay. Sorry. Uh, I, I am not okay, you are okay. So this is what we say, the child ego state. I am not okay, you are okay. And when we talk about adult ego state, then we say, I am okay, you are okay. The young teachers uh, think of this, uh, this, this life position, somebody is, uh, somebody, somebody is using abusive language, for example, and even then you are saying, I am okay, you are okay. Will it be proper? Somebody is scolding you, somebody is misbehaving with you. Can you, even then can you say that, well, I am okay, you are okay. Anybody would like to say something? Somebody is quarreling with, with you and even then can you say, I am okay, you are okay? Any idea? So the point is that it all depends upon 
perception, how, how you are being perceived. I have, you see, conflict arises and conflict increases. I mean, you cannot avoid conflicts. Conflicts are integral part of your life. You like or do not like, it never matters. Conflicts are bound to come here. So how to handle conflicts? Take a lesson from your elder brother. Simple solution is, you take an approach, I am okay, you are okay. Some students are shouting slogans, doing dharna, making dharna, sitting on dharna, Jindabad, Murdabad, Dana Shai, Nietzsche Legi, this and that. And even then you are saying, I am okay, my students are also. Can, can, can you take that approach? Well, uh, we from organization behavior belong to social sciences and not pure sciences. Pure science is pure science. Two into two, two into two, yeah, two plus two is equal to four. Pure science says two plus two is equal to four. And uh, social science says, well, two plus two may be four, plus two plus two may be five also. Two and two approaches, so these are four approaches, and one is the conclusion, the fifth one. So social sciences deal with society. So uh, the rules are also a bit flexible. So you may agree to disagree, but I'm saying that some agitation is going on. And even after that, that agitation, uh, you or I may, may take a stand that I am okay. And the students are also okay. If you take this approach, now solutions might be possible. Because if you say to somebody that you are wrong, the other person will, will spontaneously say, okay, then if I am wrong, you are also wrong. But if, but if you take this approach, that will, uh, I am okay, and you are also okay. Why I am okay? I am okay because whatever, for whatever cause you are agitating, we are trying to solve that cause. We have already started work on that. We agree that we have not been able to resolve the issue, but then the issue is in our mind and we are working hard to resolve it. So because of that, I am okay. And why you are okay? Because since the problem, since the issue has still not been resolved, so you are also okay to, to, to agitate. But now I am saying, now, I am I'm telling, I'm telling you, that we, are take, we have taken up the issue and we are putting our best energies and we hope that very soon uh, this issue will be resolved. So, because of that, we please end the agitation. So, by this approach, uh, you can better handle the situation. So, in this way, uh, these live positions are, uh, are there. Uh, these are four in that way. The last one, I am not okay and you are not okay, that doesn't come come in ego states, that is different from that. It is a pessimistic approach. I am not okay and you are not okay. It is some sort of negative approach. So this was about life positions. We talked about, uh, to begin with, we talked about ego states. Then we have some idea of life positions and noted that adult ego state is a better idea. And similarly, I am okay, you are okay. This approach is always, I mean, many times it is, uh, better. Still another important aspect of uh, human behavior is the personality. So know about the personality. Know about the personality of yourself and know about the personality of others. Again, a full lecture can be given on personality. It's a very interesting topic and very useful as well. I will just take a, a, a very small segment of personality and uh, that is uh, what are the different types of personality and how we can make some efforts or what efforts we can make to improve our personality so that our behavior is uh, fruitful, is impressive, is attractive. So personality, what is personality? I will not go in detail with regard to the meaning, 
the only thing is that how you appear your outer appearance and your inner appearance club together your outer appearance and your inner bodily your inner appearance how you think etc club together makes your personality somebody is coming before you for example somebody is coming with you before you and he he is wearing dhoti kurta so by looking at that person who is wearing dhoti and kurta and having a hawai chappal as well you may think that he is somebody somebody who is not important because you got idea that uh, this person might be from some rural areas uh, rural area or something like that he, he might not be having sufficient knowledge because he is having he is having dhoti and kurta on the other side if somebody is coming with the with the tie coat and tie and all these things and is and is speaking fluent english you 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 means we all, we all generally start thinking that the person may be a very brilliant a chap maybe some vip because he is having a suit and tie and speaking fluent english so this is what we say outer appearance so personality is a combination of intern out uh, outer as well as inner appearance inner appearance includes all your qualities you are you are having cool temperament you are having positive thinking you are have you are you, you are of innovative nature anything like that so all your qualities inner qualities and your outer appearance this the club together becomes personal if you go to a more detailed way then you can say your inner uh, your your outer appearance inner traits and the way you behave in a given situation with your outer appearance and inner uh, qualities makes your full personality so i am not taking the, the the technical part of the personality as i am taking very 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 simple way to express the meaning your inner and outer qualities makes you makes you personal so the point is that on the basis of your your appearance and your your inner qualities the persons might be of different types one is what we call type a and other one we call type b personality it's a very interesting things type a personality and type b personality any idea from my participants they can we will they, will they like to say something about type a and type b anybody okay so type a you see uh, persons of type a they are laborious persons and they take any assignment given to them you will find some some friends of yours in your college or university who if you call them if you call uh, such persons they will and give them some work they will they will happily accept it they might not be knowing anything about that work even then they will say okay sir give me i will i will give my best i will do this work yes sir, please give me so these persons of type a personality they go on doing work they are very uh disciplined lot they they they, they respect chair not the person sitting on that they respect chair and follow the guidelines follow the, follow the orders of chair of the chair blindly since they are taking assign many many assignments simultaneously so they are under stress they find little time to take their food they find little time to have sound sleep and if this happens then obviously at a later stage they have many problems physical problems with their body so type a personality now type b personality these are the persons who are very well qualified persons they have depth knowledge they have rich skills and with these positive sides the negative side is 
that they will not accept any uh, every assignment given to them persons of type b personality they will accept only those assignments wherein they believe that they have expertise if they find that they are not having the sufficient knowledge and the skills for doing that job they will not take up number 1 number 2 once they take up the assignment they try to complete that assignment the best possible way they will try to give the best possible results and since they have knowledge and skills in that particular area so generally the quality is also very appreciable but the problem is that they are not having they will not accept any assignment and it is <laughs> and another the point is that it is difficult to to manage them many times they have short temperament they do not like to be to, to get inter intervention from any side when they are doing the job they must get they must get freedom of work and i tell you how can you recognize somebody's uh, 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 somebody is of type a or type b in the generalized way i i am saying uh, there might be some exceptions here or there always is possible in social sciences see you go in the chamber of a particular person and if you find that uh, chairs are properly placed the table is free of papers the room is clean the the the, the files the the books the copies they are kept somewhere in a scientific way in a decent way it gives uh, the impression that the person is of personality known as type b personality many times you may find that persons uh, when you visit in their rooms everything is uh, just in any way placed anywhere dust is there room is not clean any like that so persons of the this nature or this uh, type is known as persons of type a now why what what advantage we can take out of getting this knowledge of type a and type b personality the knowledge is that you assign the work which is where quality is required where quality matters where you need superb achievement superb quality in that case you please try to get this type of work done by persons who are having personality b but as i said uh, it is difficult to make them accept the assignment and then it is also difficult to to manage them if you do not prop manage properly at any stage they will leave the job please take it yah le apne lakute kamariya bahut hi naach na chayo i will we will not do this work please take it so quality work is better assured by type b persons and in case you find that there are some pieces of work where nobody is coming forward not helping you uh, to perform the job well you can take type a persons also so both persons uh, i mean type a and type b both are complementary and supplementary but looking at the as i said looking at the situation looking at the uh, looking at the the, the 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 requirement you can select many times teachers are required to to organize cultural programs they have also to organize debates and all these things so in that case you you, you can look at the personality of the student that whether he or she belongs to type a or type b and accord, accordingly you assign the work your work will be done accordingly second type of uh, personality is introvert and extrovert personality is introvert personality and extrovert personality now introvert personality holders they do not like to share their feelings with others whereas extrovert personality holders they love to share their feelings 
so the jobs or the pieces of work where more interaction is not required this type of work or this uh, this type of pieces of work uh, is is advised to be given to persons who are of introvert nature and where uh, more interaction with the members of the society is required uh, well this pieces of work better should be given to extrovert personality holders who love to uh, to to, be, to uh, meet persons now how can you recognize whether one is of introvert or extrovert the simple uh, reply is that uh, if you love to uh, to to go for picnic if you love to go for uh, sightseeing if you love to attend marriage parties birthday parties if you love to uh, to participate in culture programs well the possibility is that you are a person of extrovert nature but you who do not like to mix up with the society members you you love to remain uh, in your room and you do not like to share your feelings with others then uh, perhaps you are a person of introvert personality now my my important uh, caution is that uh, the persons of introvert nature well many times or at least sometimes they go they go for suicide also my own experience in banaras hindu city says that uh, wherever suicide cases have been reported in the campus most of them most of the students they belong to introvert personality holders so they they go for suicide or they are they are under more stress the persons uh, of uh, introvert nature they are under more stress simply uh, because uh, they do not unload their mental load mental load is your stress if you have some problem share with your friends share with your father mother wife husband whatever you call it. why why you keep your mental load in you don't do that share it nothing is going to happen this persons of introvert nature they always think what what others will feel if i tell about myself my problem what they will feel about me oh then what will happen to me they they, they are fearful of this type so my request uh, obviously some teachers who are who are attending this program some of them must be of introvert nature i will request them to think over this uh, approach and try to slowly and slowly uh, switch over from introvert to extrovert nature however if you fail to do, to, to do that even then i will say that kindly share your feelings with anybody if not anybody then you may share with you with the god any god whom you worship if you do not worship you have no faith in religion then you can sit uh, sit in a park you can sit in the room and talk to walls ki walon ko bhi kaan hote hain walls have the ears you you, you tell everything which you want to see, tell to the walls to the trees to the plants to the rivers to the hills anybody any anywhere who sit there the simple the simple uh, uh, purpose is to unload your mental load when you when you talk about those things outside the mental load slowly and slowly it climbs so please uh, do something like that if possible third is proactive and reactive personality proactive and reactive personality these also these are two types of persons proactive persons are the persons who pre plan everything and the reactive persons are the persons who plan when the work is to be started for example uh, uh, professor bhart tendu singh ji uh, uh, contacted me many many days back and he said sir you have to speak something then i said what i should speak he said sir take any topic of your choice so i i said you can take any heading so no sir please tell when i go okay give this heading uh, and uh, believe me i i could not uh, spare time uh, because of my own uh, problems uh, engagements ki okay, what i should talk to my friends how how i should uh, schedule my my lecture i could not do that i, I do not know whether i could have done, done justice or not but believe me uh, this uh, this uh, reactive personality of mine creates uh, many problems for me uh, but anyway uh, i i also try to do something well in advance but uh, Uh, old habits die hard many times i feel 
anyway but you should be uh, you, you should be of a, a nature where proactive approach is uh, adopted before you 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 go for anything you you prepare yourself properly for example in your uh, orientation program uh, there may be a need to present uh, a, a topic before your participants do exercise your teacher do hard work or mid like lab and prepare a lecture prepare the topic prepare the make the presentation in such a way that all all the participants start wondering well, look how he has met how how he or she has met the presenters it is possible dear teacher it is possible you all are unique every teacher is unique every teacher is extraordinary i think you agree with me anybody sitting in the uh, in the in the program will say that no sir i am not extraordinary anybody will say like that no nobody is saying that means everybody is extraordinary and if somebody feel that well uh, on face i am saying i am extraordinary but still i am not so the most simple uh, question is who is stopping you to become extraordinary who has stopped the coordinator of this program the hod of your university department or college your parents your friends your teachers who have stopped you from becoming extraordinary except you so why not you become an extraordinary become so so take a lesson from my lecture from today onwards you will do something so that you become extraordinary you must behave in the this orientation program in such a way that everybody believes you are extraordinary ask questions participate in the programs do something that everybody says oh kaash hum bhi aisa hote that approach when you when you have taken the orientation program do whole heartedly don't complete the formality no formality is not to be completed you have to learn something you have to you have an image for others that they so they also start doing something like you they also try to become like you that should be the goal that should be the target and that should be the height where you have reached and believe dear teachers all of you i repeat i once again repeat everybody sitting here is unique nature has not copied you in any way you are all alone in your own qualities with your own qualities just Uh, recognize yourself and do work so proactive and reactive personality then positive and negative personality oh this is very good positive and negative personality there are persons who always love to praise others to do good for others and side by side there are certain other persons also who go on finding faults finding problem with others the positive uh, uh, personality holders they try to locate good qualities good events good features good things everywhere in every person whereas the negative thinking holders they also they always try to find out faults find out problems find out drawbacks find out shortcomings when my lecture will be over somebody some person may appreciate and some others who are my Uh, negative personality holders they will criticize me with their all their energies oh obira he came what the hell he taught he couldn't understand one hot topic he was talking talking speaking teaching well the simply ruthless killing of done time was done by obira so i i salute you friend you speak like this you are not to be blamed your approach is to be blamed i will request you to uh, change this approach everybody who is giving lecture in this seminar in this uh, uh, in this academic program well he that teacher who is speaking before you he or she must have at least one or two qualities concentrate on qualities no, don't go for the merits <clears throat> look at the merits then your own merits will enrich and if you go to demerits then then your own demerits will, will become uh, stronger so uh last point of, of this particular 
personality is that those who are in a negative personality zone well unfortunately they are going to have a painful life why because they go on criticizing so others also criticize them when you criticize somebody you create negative energy in yourself and that negative energy brings a number of physical problems for you you may you may not have sound sleep you may not have good uh, health simply because you are you are continuously uh, uh, getting negative energy in your body so so for you at least your own health you you avoid it. creating negative energy but remember mind it i am not saying that you should not criticize you must criticize but that criticism should be of positive nature positive nature positive nature criticism means you criticize not for the sake of criticism not for getting somebody down bringing somebody down no you criticize because you feel that by doing so you are going to improve the performance of the person about whom you are criticize so when the purpose of criticism is to bring betterment it is always it must be always encouraged and in fact that is not in true sense criticism but as i said if you criticize for the sake of uh, bringing somebody down this that should be avoided at least in your own um, interest so these are the various types of uh, personality uh, i was thinking of giving you some idea with regard to how you can increase your personal how you can improve your personality how 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 you can become so that if you go anywhere if you stand before anybody how that the person before whom you are uh, standing or with whom you are interacting get impressed how can you impress others and how can you create a, pers- a, a personality where whatever you want you get it whatever you want you can get it whatever you obey that will be obeyed that is possible friends the only thing is for that purpose you have to develop expertise you have to improve your self image you have to as i said develop positive thinking you have to learn how stress can be managed you must exchange favors you help others others will help you so exchange favors <clears throat> avoid misuse of authority make rational persuasion acquire motivational skills know how to motivate others you see by motivation you can make a youth take you can make a human being human bomb negative motivation can make a human being a human bomb and positive motivation may convert a human bomb to a super human being i think i am i am telling you the i am i am making you understand the importance of motivation motivation can bring miseries or motivation can bring miracles it is motivation which makes a man human human bomb or which makes a man super human being so acquire motivational skills accept challenging assignments if somebody says if your boss says hey, look mr x nobody is willing to do this work will you help me doing you say yes sir i will do if nobody is doing i will do don't say that say, if, if, if none is willing to do then why i will do and how i can do don't don't have this approach <clears throat> so <clears throat> with these things uh, you can uh, improve your personality uh, to the extent that everybody uh, loves you and uh, uh, you you have uh, a good health and a happy life uh, for yourself dear teachers for god's sake never ever have a thinking that for becoming happy you need money badly remember money matters money matters man money is not the only matter which matters still money matters so happiness is not directly related with money it may help you but ultimately it is the uh, the, the the approach towards helping others which brings you uh, happiness well with these words i think my honorable head sir is there uh, so i get uh, a, a signal that my time is over so sir ji uh, sir head sir and yes, sir. Uh, sir i i once again offer my sincere thanks uh, 
to, to both of you uh, for giving me an opportunity to exchange my uh, my feelings with my future professors and thank you sir thank you so much sir um your discourse this is not simple lecture in fact this is a discourse and uh, it has a lot of value uh, practical value because uh, you you took some examples practical examples from our work life for example uh, conflicts uh, interpersonal conflicts and uh, especially between the teachers and the students and between among the teachers sometimes it is more difficult to handle uh, uh, the conflicts that arise uh, among the among the colleagues rather than uh, um, between the teacher and the student so it has a lot of practical value and some uh, just uh, uh, professor g soral sir i welcome you and uh, you already joined and professor op rai just delivered his lecture on uh, uh, science and art of uh, human behavior <laughs> excellent excellent yeah <laughs> so, uh, so good morning sir, sir good morning uh, yeah just uh, maybe one question i will take sir um mm. I actually um, not questions and many people i think uh, uh, they appreciated your lecture um, and a uh, lot of appreciation uh, thank you so much sir thank you so much and uh, um, and once again a big thanks sir big thanks yeah, yeah. for okay, giving sir. for giving your time and namaskar okay sir okay sir uh, now i welcome a uh, uh, professor g soral um, in simple words uh, is well he, he, is uh, uh, is a valuation of uh, our department, department